voice uh, clear? Yes, Chef. Okay. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala al-ma'uth rahmatan lil alameen. Nabiyyina wa habibina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim mabad. Al-yawm al-sabi' min shahri safar alfun wa arbaumiyatin wa sittatin wa arbaun al-muafiq li athna ashar min shahri agostas alfani wa arbaatun wa ishirun. نواصل درسنا في هذا الكتاب المبارك أشرط الساعة نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يبارك فينا وفيما نتعلمه وأن يغفر لنا الزلات ويغفر للمؤلف ويرفع درجته في العليين So بإذن الواحد الأحد uh, Today we have uh, a short uh, title which is about تعريف أشرط الساعة Definition of the signs of the day of judgment Uh, definition of the sign of uh, signs of the day of judgment. It's good to know uh, the meaning of what you are doing so that you will be able to understand it correctly. As the scholar said, al ala farun and For you to be able to judge, to reflect, you need to understand. Uh, that's why if you don't understand, uh, you will never be able to put it into into action to reflect upon whatever you are being told. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-An'am, he talks about those who are saya, al-jabbara, al-azimah, uh, uh, those recommendations and advice for the success of human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ تَعَالَوْا أَتْلُمَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ أَتْلُمَا حَرَّمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ أَلَّا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْعَ Until the end of the three ayat. In the first ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَلِكُمْ مَصَّاكُمْ بِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ It started with the ta'qul, which is the essence of understanding. If there is no aql, there will not be any understanding to uh, that which you are being told by others. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ In the second ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَلِكُمْ مَصَّاكُمْ بِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about the tadakkur, uh, because there is no way for a person to have the tadakkur uh, if the aql is not is not there. So the last one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَلِكُمْ مُسَّاكُمْ بِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ This is the wasiya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you can attain taqwa. So you can see the sequence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started with the taqul because it is necessary for a person to understand what he is being told by others. In the second ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the tadakkur because we assume that the person now has aql. In the third ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the taqwa, because if you have the aql, you use it to understand the text, and you're going to reflect bi'ibnillahi azza wa jal, and what is the result of reflection? Taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, otherwise that would not be a correct reflection. So, this is the, the reason why it is uh, necessary upon us to study this uh, ashrat al-sa'a. Uh, so insha'Allah, uh, I mean to study the meaning of these uh, so that whenever we talk, you know what we are we are talking about. So I will have this uh, short uh, topic uh, today and then in the next uh, class we'll move on to the beginning of the Ashrat Sa'a uh, Surah. Wait a minute, I lost the page. Sorry, I'm using PDF, so I just lost the page now. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Okay, يقول المؤلف رحمه الله تعريف أشرط الساعة معنى الشرط أو الشرط. So you should listen to the way I'm pronouncing it. You have الشرط and you have الشرط. الشرط بالتحريك قال هو العلامة هو العلامة الساين to something when you say الشرط then it will be علامة الساين when you say الشرط with uh, سكون not تحريك then it will be a condition a condition that is not to uh, the فقهاء something that has to happen for the validity to take place if it doesn't happen then the validity will be will be uh, rejected So if you recite and you read this word, 
with tahrik then it will be al alama wa jam'u hu ashrat the plural of the shart is ashrat get it ashrat and and, and then the second one the, the other one is jam'u hu shurut wa ashrat al shay awailuhu so when you hear the word ashrat something ashrat al sa'ah it means awail al shay the first part of that thing the first part of that thing ashrat al shay the the, the ashrat of something is referring to the first part of that thing. وَمِنْهُ شُرَطُ sultan And uh, from this meaning, the people call those نُخْبَةُ uh, أَصْحَابِهِ أَصْحَابِ الْمَلِكِ أَوْ السُلْطَانِ الَّذِينَ يُقَدِّمُهُمْ عَلَى غَيْرِهِمْ مِنْ جُنْدِهِ Those special forces that the king or the leader is putting them forward favoring them more than anybody uh, else. Uh, it means those people who are special, you know, bodyguards, those people who are with him. So they call them Shuratu As-Sultan. Shuratu As-Sultan. وَمِنْهُ الْإِشْتِرَاتِ الَّذِي يَشْتَرَتُهُ النَّاسُ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضُ And also, it is part of it, the condition that people have, you know, uh, uh, between or amongst uh, themselves. You get it? ف... Uh, why the, why did they... Did they they say also it is related to that because as shartu alamatu shay alamatun ala al mashrut because shart is a sign that indicates the existence of the mashrut. You get it? You make you make a condition, and if you fulfill this, you get this. If you have this, you get this. So if the shart exists, then the mashrut is going to exist. So that shart is a sign, you know, that indicates the existence of al mashrut, that indicates the existence of al قال معنى الساعة في اللغة هي جزء من أجزاء الليل والنهار. Please tell the one to reduce their voice. قال معنى الساعة في اللغة the meaning of a ساعة according to the language هي جزء من أجزاء الليل والنهار. is ساعة means part of you know part of day or night. Any part of a day or night, we call it a sa'a. So when we say a sa'a, we're not talking about that, the hour, the one we know in our contemporary time. Uh, so what is a jam'u? The plural of the sa'a is sa'at or sa'un. وَاللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ مَعَنْ أَرْبَعُنْ وَعِشْرُونَ سَعَا If you put night and day, you know, you have uh, night and you have day. If you put them all together, you come up with 24 uh, hours. So when they say a sa'ah, they're referring to any part of the day or, or night. This is the meaning according to the language. Huh? This is the meaning according to the language. As we always mention, it is necessary to know the linguistic meaning so that when it comes to the sharia, the sharia meaning, it will not be difficult for you to understand. Hello, ma'ana. So what is the meaning of sa'a according to the Islamic or the technical definition? The time in which the qiyama is going to happen. Okay? The time in which the qiyama is going to is going to happen. And when uh, in Islam we say sa'a, we are referring to the time which the qiyama is going to happen in it. لسرعة الحساب فيها أو لأنها تفجأ الناس في ساعة فيموت الخلق كلهم بصيحة واحدة. So why do we why why is it called الساعة? Some scholars said because uh, لسرعة الحساب فيها because the حساب is very quick in it and it just ساعة uh, this moment of a day the حساب is going to take place. How many people pass this life and how many genes pass this life? How many animals, you know, imagine everyone is going to receive his sishab accurately, in detail, with no deficiency in that uh, moment of, of time. So that's uh, the reason why it is called sa according to the way some scholars have seen. Others said, no, because it surprises people. It comes, you know, just like that. I can hear. Without... Assalamu alaikum. I don't know what that is, Sheikh. Please continue. Okay. 
لانها تفجا الناس في ساعه فيموت الخلق كلهم بصحه واحده because it comes you know uh, just like that in a moment you know without any further notice and then what happens after that فيموت الخلق كلهم بصحه واحده people are going to die all of them with no exception with one shout one blowing in the trumpet everyone is going to go so the wages come and then people will just die just like that and on the day of judgment it will just uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the angel to blow and then everyone will just come in a state of confusion they said this is the reason why it is called a sa'a because of the mufaja it fajr nasa fa yamutu nas kullahum fi fi dafatin wahida so both of these uh, uh, two meanings are, are applicable both of these two meanings are apl- applicable أصدق بيجا كي كي الحمد لله قال فأشراط الساعة علامات القيامة هي علامات القيامة التي تسبقها وتدل على قربها so okay then what is the أشراط الساعة قال هي علامات القيامة these are the signs of the day of judgment you know that will come before the day of judgment which is indicating that the day of judgment is very near So those signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put to take place before the day of judgment which are indicating that the day of judgment is very is very near. وقيل هي ما تنكره الناس من صغار امورها قبل ان تقوم الساعه. These are the people that are strange, strange things that will happen to the people, you know, strange things which are really abnormal, you know, uh, minor things that will take place, you know, uh, before the day of judgment. Uh, this is uh, the ashrat الساعة. whatever comes which is abnormal against the normal before the day of judgment is called أشراط الساعة وقيل هي أسبابها التي هي دون معظمها وقيامها and he, they said uh, some scholars said these are the causes of the day of judgment because they have to happen first and then the day of judgment will take place you know دون معظمها so you have the day of judgment which is uh, categorized and classified into different uh, segments and categories There are things which are so big and there are things which are small. So the small, small, small things that will take place before the Day of Judgment, these are what we call Qiyam, Ashratu Asa'a. Qala wa Asa'atu tutlaqo ala thalafi ma'ani. And when you hear the word Asa'a, the, the, the scholars use the word Asa'a to address one of the three things. Number one, Asa'atu Sughra. Number two, Asa'atu Al-Wusta. Number three, الساعه الكبرى so when the scholars said الساعه they use it to address three things الساعه الكبرى الساعه الصغرى الساعه الوسطى الساعه الصغرى وهي موت الانسان فمن مات فقد قامت قيامته بدخوله في عالم الاخر the first ساعه which is ساعه الصغرى you know the ساعه itself is divided into three things or the scholars use it to address one of the three things either the minor hour or the middle one or the the big the biggest one the major one a sura the middle uh, the minor one he about al insan is referring to the death of a person because from a matter faqad qamat qiyamatu because whoever dies his qiyama begins whoever dies his qiyama begins فقد قامت قيامته. So ليش? Why do we call a dead person? You know, why do we see him as somebody who already started his own قيامة? They said لدخوله في عالم الآخر because he already entered the عالم الآخر, the world of the آخر, the next uh, dimension. Yeah, because when a person dies, خلاص. For him alone, the قيامة already began because he already enter that dimension he's just waiting for the hour to, to happen he's not waiting for the ashrat al-sa'a to take place because he already passed that one the one that will be seen the ashrat al-sa'a is us living in this dunya but for the one who already died went to the grave his qiyama already already begun al-wusta and the middle sa'a where he mawtu ahl al-qarn al-wahid it's the death of the people you know ahl al-qarn al-wahid you know 
uh, one generation to die, you know, completely. All of them died. Is called is also called asa, asa al wusta. We call it. You get it? A generation, a specific generation that passes. We call that passing. All of them when they die, we call it asa, asa al wusta. But you are you did alika marawatu Aisha radiyallahu anha qalat. كانت الأعراب إذا قدموا على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سألوه عن الساعة. عائشة رضي الله عنها said الأعراب الأعراب these are the Bedouins. When you come to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, when you come to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم um, سألوه عن الساعة. They usually ask him about the day of judgment. متى الساعة? When is the last day? فناظر إلى أحدث إنسان منه. And the Prophet Allah Subhanahu wa he look at the, the youngest one amongst them. You know, there was a time these Arab they came to the Prophet Allah Subhanahu they asked him about the day of judgment. So the Prophet Allah Subhanahu wa look at the youngest one amongst them. He told them, إن يعيش هذا لم تد لم يدرك الهرم حتى he says قامت عليكم ساعة. He says, إن يعيش هذا لم يدرك الهرم قامت عليكم ساعته. Is if this person lives, he will not reach the eight, the old age, until your qiyama already begun. It meaning, uh, it means before that, uh, the, the, the this person dies or before he reaches old age, all of you guys will die. You know. So the Prophet Allah is. Referring to the moat. When he says sa'atukum, he's referring to, to the moat. So that's why they said as sa'atul wasta is referring to the, uh, the death of one generation because of this hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha. In yesh hada lam yudrikul haramu qamat alaykum sa'atukum. Before this person reached the haram, haram is old age, he says qamat alaykum sa'atukum, ay mawtukum. You will all die. وأن المرادة ساعة المخاطبين. So the Prophet Allah Sama is talking to the مخاطبين, those people that he is speaking speaking to. The last one is الساعة الكبرى, the major the major hour, the major hour. This is the يوم القيامة. وهي بعث الناس من قبورهم للحساب والجزاء. And this is bringing. This is referring to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bringing people. Out of their graves, you know, back to life for the hisab and recompense. The last one to bring everyone. So that bringing, you know, of the people out of their graves alive is called a sa. It's called a sa. And this is the greatest one. This is the biggest one. Whenever you hear a sa, al qiyamah, is referring to this one. Unless if that is a circumstantial evidence which uh, tells you. That that great meaning is not intended. قال وإذا أطلقت الساعة في القرآن فالمراد بها القيامة الكبرى. Whenever the sa'a is being mentioned in the Quran, the meaning is referring to the قيامة الكبرى. The قيامة الكبرى. Whenever you hear the word sa'a in the book of Allah subhanahu wa taala, this is referring to القيامة الكبرى. So we categorize the قيامة or the sa'a into three. Uh, categories, right? So now you know the Kubra, you know the Wusta, and you know the, the Sugra. So uh, the Sheikh said, whenever you hear the word al asa in the Quran, whenever you see the word asa in the Quran, the reference is to the Qiyama al Kubra. Qala Ta'ala, yes, aluka nasu an sa'a. Yes, aluka nasu an sa'a. I am Qiyamah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yes, aluka nasu an al-sa'ah, I am Qiyamah. People are asking you about the sa'ah. What does that mean? Al-Qiyamah. Wa qala ta'ala, iqtarabat al-sa'atu, ay iqtarabat al-Qiyamah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, iqtarabat al-sa'atu, is referring to the Qiyamah being very close and near. Wa qad dhakar Allah ta'ala al-Qiyamatayni al-Sura wal-Kubra fi al-Qur'an al-Kareem. فَتَجِدُهُ يَذْكُرُ الْقِيَامَتَيْنِ فِي السُّورَةِ الْوَاحِدَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about both the major and the minor qiyamah. And that's why you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about the qiyamah, al-sughra, wal-kubra, 
in one surah. كما في سورة الواقعة. Just like what we found in سورة الواقعة. فإنه ذكر في أولها القيامة الكبرى. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the first part of the qiyama, in the, I'm sorry, in the first part of the surah to al-waqi'ah, al-qiyamat al-kubra. You talk about the qiyamat al-kubra, the biggest qiyam. فقال تعالى, إذا وقعت الواقعه ليس لواقعتها كاذبة خافرة الرافعة. Al-waqi'ah is one of the, the names of the day of judgment. If you remember, we already talked about that. Al-waqi'ah is one of the names of the day of judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذَا وَقَعَتِ الْوَاقِعَةِ When al-waqi'ah happens at the day of judgment, when it takes place, and nobody can deny this, because now you're living with the reality. You know, only in this time of ours, you find a person who is having doubt, or who can have a capacity to, I mean, ability to reject the possibility of the day of judgment. You know, uh, you have people who don't agree and don't believe that the day of judgment is true. But when it takes place, and nobody will be able to deny it. When it happened, nobody will be able to, to deny it. As well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَيْسَ الْوَقَعْتِهَا كَاذِبًا Nobody will be able to deny it when it, when it happens. خَافِذَةُ الرَّافِعَةُ Subhanallah. So it will be bringing down the kuffar, wrongdoers, Fusag, the bad people, Allah SWT will put them in the lowest level. Rafia, and it will raise up the ranking and the level of the believers. So the believers, they will be placed in that high position, and the non believers, they will be humiliated on that day. So Allah SWT says, إِذَا رُجَّتِ الْأَرْضُ رَجَّةً You know, Rafia, so this is. A clear warning to all of us, you know, to prepare for this, to make sure that we we work towards that which will uh, put us in the higher position when we meet Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. إذا رجت الأرض رجع, you know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "What you want to know when uh, is that going to happen? You know, wait until you see the time Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will shake the earth, a great shaking." and and the, the 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 mountains, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn them into dust. They will be just like a dust that is scattered and thrown away by somebody. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says people will be divided into, into three. The people of the Yameen. What do you know about those people of the Yameen? Allah SWT will talk about them in the surah itself. And the people of the Shema. You know, and these are the people who are being placed on the left side. They will receive their, their righteous, uh, the book of record uh, on the left side, you know, through the left hand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالسَّابِقُونَ السَّابِقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَجْعَلَنِي وَإِيَّاكُمْ يَرْمِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the sabiqoon is sabiqoon. Sabiqoon is sabiqoon. Ulaik al-muqarrabun. These are the closest people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the question is, is sabiqoon is sabiqoon? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the umam as sabiq, others who came before us. And the umam of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the, the umma al-lahiqa. And then the vast majority of these sabiqoon will be from the previous nation. And the umma of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be a little. Or Allah SWT is referring to the first part of this Ummah and also the latter generation of this Ummah. You know, وَسَابِقُونَ السَّابِقُونَ أُولَئِكَ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ But Ibn Kathir and others, they mentioned that no, the best approach is to use the word as-sibaq to define these people. To say that these are the people who are always doing the sibaq fil khayrat. They are always rushing, you know, to please Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They compete with each other you know, in terms of uh, doing the righteous deed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِيَبْلُوكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ amala." So the competition between these people is, is for this. Who is going to be the best in terms of his uh, approach when it comes to ibadat? That's why these type of people, you see them always rushing to the masajid, always rushing to the classes, always uh, rushing to wherever they can find knowledge, 
always remember in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to charity, they rush and give first before anybody else. When it comes to going to the masjid, you see them first in the first line, you know. SubhanAllah, we have heard a lot of, uh, you know, among the Salaf al who are, you know, practicing this uh, siva. SubhanAllah. That's why they got all the virtues which we we lost. And inshallah, we'll be able to catch up if we, if we want. But uh, they got all the virtues. You, know, you get it? One of them spent 25 years, never, you know, listen, never hear the adhan when he was out of the masjid. 25 years. Every prayer, Fajr, though. When he was out of the masjid, 25 years. We're not talking about five years or five days. No, 25 years. Within these 25 years, this person never listened to Adhan when he was out of the masjid. He mentioned about one of them, subhanAllah, whatever he is doing, Whenever the Mu'adhan says, Allahu Akbar, the first letter of, of the Adhan, when he hears that, he will stop. They said he was cutting wood. Most likely that was his business. And then the Mu'adhan, you know, make the Adhan. Right when he hears the first letter, he was raising up the, the axe to hit the wood with it. But when he hears the Adhan, he did not hit the wood. He stopped and he goes and prays. This is the time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's life. Unless we try to come closer to them if we are not exactly like them. So please be rushing towards the khairat and study, study. Wallah, this is my advice to you, study. Don't be lazy. These days of ours is full of laziness and excuses. Everyone has excuses. Yeah, these excuses are not going to take you anywhere. So don't have any excuse. You know, you don't have excuse. You have a lot of time given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just about managing that time properly. You manage it properly, you will succeed. You don't manage it properly, you will fail in the way others fail. So it's my personal advice to all of you to really study, 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 study. Don't miss any class that you are attending. Always go to the classes as long as that class is benefiting you. And don't have excuses. Whether you know what is being told or you don't know what is being told, these are the classes. This is how they are. Sometimes most of the things you're going to be hearing in a day, there will be a repetition of what you have heard. And this is how we devise knowledge. This is how you get to remember everything you heard. That's why somebody was saying the difference between Sheikh Islam and us is that Rabbahu al ulama, you know, ulama the scholars gave to Intermia Tarbiya, meaning. Most likely his knowledge is all uh, sama, taken from scholars, as many scholars. Contrary to us, he said that Sheikh, most of our knowledge is from, from the book. And that's why you see Dhakira to Kawiya, Akwa, much stronger than our Dhakira. Now, some of these scholars, when you go to the house, you might not find uh, a lot of books, but they, they, they go to the library, they study from the library, and they go to the scholars. Wherever they can go, they go and learn. Because what you get from the scholars most likely will be more established than what you're reading from, from the books. Both have their own great benefit, but those scholars, they will establish a foundation in your heart, then you will be able to use those foundations to understand what you're reading in the books. So be serious. Be serious and honest to yourself. Don't miss classes based on excuses which you will regret in, in the future. There is always, inshallah, a better way to manage your time properly and combine between uh, knowledge and other responsibilities. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالسَّابِقُونَ السَّابِقُونَ So we know who is the Sabiqun, right? And the Sabiqun, they are everyone who wants to join. You know, the door is open. It is not restricted to the past, even people of today, until the time, يَرْثِ اللَّهُ الْأَرْضَ وَمَنْ عَلَيْهَا Everyone can join the Sabiqun, Sabiqun, if he wants. If he wants. You know, what to do to join them is already clear. So if a person wants, he can join them. ثم في آخرها. So this is in the first part of Surah Al-Waqiyah. Allah talk about the Qiyamah Al-Kubra. ثم في آخرها ذكر القيامة الصغرى. In the last part of the, the Surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about the Qiyamah Al-Sughra, where he'll moat, which is death. فقال فلولا إذا بلغت الحلقوم وأنتم حين إذ تنظرون ونحن أقرب إليه منكم ولكن لا تبصرون. I guess we talk about this last uh, uh, dars. 
the last Muhammad and I was talking to the human beings who are, you know, uh, not believing in the possibility of the day of judgment to take place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, oh, why can't you, since you have the capacity to reject, why can't you just uh, re return the, the, the soul when it reached the, the, the throat? Why can't you just return it, put it back to that person? Don't let it go out. And you guys are looking at that person. What? Allah says, Allah says, you Allah is death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us uh, good. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ability to pass this life in the in the good and correct way. You Allah, we have heard a lot. We read a lot and we have heard a lot. Very critical moment. These type of things when you hear the story of, of uh, uh, some people, you know, uh, subhanAllah, it's really amazing and scary at the same time. Yeah. I was listening to a story of a sister who passed uh, yesterday. Uh, not yesterday, but I got the story yesterday. SubhanAllah, very critical moment. A person is willing to say, you know, the one who is next to him knows that, yes, this person is trying to say something, but they can't. They can't. The last thing they mention is that everything is done, and then that's it. They pass. SubhanAllah. Nobody understands what they meant until the time they passed. They left. One of the doctors, when he saw uh, uh, the, the, the moment, he told the one next to them, he says, please just go to them. Because these people, they have experiences of people dying next to them. So he said, when he just saw uh, the, the, the person, he said, he just go next to them and say, shahada to them. Nobody knows what he's talking about until the time she passed away. Because he sees the sign which he used to see when people are about to die. But other people don't know. Last one says, says, to he didn't tell the road, you know. Neither that person nor anybody who was with that person was able to bring her back. They were crying, everyone was crying, but that doesn't work. Malik al Maut, when he's given that instruction, Wallahi Oksimu Billah, the person has to go, whether he likes it or he doesn't like it. That's why it really needs us to be prepared. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to prepare for this moment, good preparation. Preparation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we are closer to him than, than you, but unfortunately, you guys don't see that. But we are there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Angels are there very close to that person, very close. And he sees them. He sees them, but he cannot tell anyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about the two qiyamah also, al-sughra al kubra in the surah of al qiyam La uqusimu biyawm al qiyamah Allah SWT says, La Allah swears by the Qiyamah. So this is the Qiyamah Al-Kubra. وَهَذِهِ الْقِيَامَةِ الْكُبْرَى ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ الْمَوْتَ And then Allah SWT talk about death. فَقَالَ كَلَّا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ التَّرَاقِي وَقِيلَ مَنْ رَاقْ When Allah SWT says, كَلَّا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ التَّرَاقِي وَقِيلَ مَنْ رَاقْ Allah SWT is, looking, is talking about the, 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 the soul when it reaches the Tarqwa. The throat is part of the the, the 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 neck when the soul reaches this this place, and then people are talking about: Is there anyone who can help? Maybe looking for a medical doctor, somebody to give some medication so that we can, you know, uh, help this person. Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "No, can la ida balakat al-tarak, wa qila man wa dhanna anna al-firak. Dhanna anna al-firak means aykan anna al-firak." A person is sure, 100%, having yaqeen that this is khalas, the end of his life. But what can he do? Well, tafat is saqo bis saq ila rabbika yawma idhi nil masaq. SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, kalla idha balagat al taraqi. So this is the mention of the qiyamah as sughra. Wa huwa al qiyamah as sughra. Wa ghayru dhalika kathirun fil Quran al karib, mimma yadiku al maqam al dhikri. And we have so many other places. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, which time will not permit us to, to talk about, about that. The Qiyamah as sughra or Kubra are mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran and by the Prophet sallallahu in the Sunnah in many places. Well, Qiyamah al Kubra here, let's see, the Sada diha, the Sada di Bayani, Ashratiha, and let's see, Jaat fi, al Kitabi, al Sunnah. But the focus is on the Qiyamah al Kubra, not the Qiyamah as sughra And this is what we'll be explaining. You know, insha'Allah, uh, uh, its conditions or the signs uh, in this uh, book of ours, and we will do that through the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and 
the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this is the end of this uh, uh, chapter, and I will not go to the next one, inshallah. Next dars bi idhn al wahid al ahad, and we will be dealing with aqsamu ashrati as saa idhn Allah. So if there is any question, Adam, please uh, do help us uh, to read uh, those questions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you good and tawfiq and be with you wherever you are. Inna hu bi kulli jameelin kafir. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiru wa atubu ilayk. From Sister Morni. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Ya Shaykh. Can a sister be at home, be the best wife she could be, and nurture her children to the very best she could, achieve to be among the sabiqun al-muqarrabun. Yes. Yes. Because sibaq is not restricted to a specific type of thing. One of the greatest acts of worship that a person does, you know, especially the sisters, wallahi, is to take care of the jeen. To raise up a child that is capable of leading the ummah to the success. Which nobody has the capacity to do it more than a woman, whether we like it, whether we like it, that's the truth. Yeah, with the cooperation of man at the side to help, you know, nobody can do that job if there is no intervention of of a sister. So if she is to be sincere, taking care of the children, very serious on that, and he takes he takes it as the responsibility from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Subhanahu wa Taala, not from the husband or from anybody else. No, this is Allah. Uh, you know, uh, what do you call, um, uh, command, you know, to her to do this. And she's doing it based on this. Why can she be among the sabiqun if she is, if she is uh, truthful and sincere? And imagine if she uh, raised up that child in a good way. She raised it up in a good way. Very righteous, dedicated person who led the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to success, who became a scholar, a mufti. Minister, doing the right thing, president, prime minister, king, whoever this person is, you know, in the future where the nation is benefiting, you know, from him, he took the nation to the success. Imagine every single thing this person is getting, the mother is getting the same thing. And actually taking that nation to success, she was the one who did it, not the son. Because she was the one who prepared him to do all of these things. The foundation was laid down. So it's a very great job that Shayateen in the West, they managed to convince our sisters that this is deficiency for a sister to be a housewife. Awudhu billah. It's a matter of choice. For a person to choose to work or not to work is okay. As long as the place is conducive, it's okay. But when it, when it comes to the virtues of taking care of a child, like there is no room of comparison between this and others. And other, whatever job she's going to get in this dunya. And that's why when we get busy with the other job, and we neglect the real job that Allah SWT put on our shoulder, because uh, sister also is thinking that she cannot be a great person unless if she does what the brothers are doing. Unfortunately, this is what we're doing nowadays. You know, she believes that she cannot do a great job unless if she does what the brothers is, is doing. Unfortunately. That's why they managed to convince us. And you can see the nature of the Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at our kids. You know that, yes, um, we're not doing the right thing. Allah, the future is really, really going to be tragedy if we are not careful. We really need to change the way we think. Even if a person decided to work, it's okay, it's fine. But don't forget that great job that Allah SWT put on your shoulder, which you will be questioned by Allah SWT about that. She is also a shepherd in the house of the husband. Allah will ask her about that responsibility he put on her shoulder. So this is a very painful uh, topic, but may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aid us and help us to be able to pass this uh, test and also to wake up, you know, to wake up May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to gain back our consciousness and understand life in the way it should be understood and also be able to favor the sharia over any other interest. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good. Yes, Adam. Uh, question from Brother Uzair. 
السلام عليكم شيخ السلام ورحمة الله Would it be possible to ask for the explanation of this hadith? Iqra'u al-Qur'an fa'innahu ya'ti yawm al-qiyamati Why? Why, don't Why don't you remind me uh, last time, Adam? Next dars, inshallah. Oh, next dars? Really? Okay. Yeah, somebody should remind me before the next uh, class, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. Uh, then from Sister Sorry, Shafa. I know. Sister Shafa, can we explain? Actually, this looks like the same question Azir is asking. Uh, they want oh. to know about the ruling regarding vinegar. Does it intoxicate? It doesn't. But does uh, it intoxicate? The, the, the sister that is asking um, from Azir's side says it contains spirit vinegar. So the difference between spirit vinegar and the vinegar in Malaysia is that the when you're making spirit vinegar, it's an intermediary. There's like an intermediary stage where it is just alcohol. So it's like vinegar that is derived from alcohol, but the vinegar itself does not have alcohol in it. Yeah, the one that is what you should focus on, you know, does it intoxicate or not? If it doesn't intoxicate, then a person can take it. You get it? Uh, you get it, Adam. Whatever yes. intoxicates, it, it is not okay for a person to take it. But the, the khal, I guess this is what is called uh, vinegar in, uh, in English. A person can take it. It's halal for a person to take it as long as it doesn't intoxicate. That's why wine also can turn into khal by itself. And Islamically, when that happens, then you can, you can use it. Although you cannot do the process yourself, or it, it is converted by itself. Then a person can use it. The, com the process of conversion cannot be done by a person, and it will be haram. But a person, uh, when it is converted by itself, it changes into a vinegar or a khal, a person can use it. So I give you this principle always focus on intoxication. Whatever intoxicate, it will be impermissible for a person to, uh, to take it. You know. Ozair asks, how do we find out if it intoxicates? Was well, that how can we find out when it if it is intoxicated? I thought they they wrote uh, right the the components right. So if you don't see anything, then you will take it as the halal one. Yeah, you know, to make life easy. When you go to the market, you're buying the vinegar, you read the, the content. And they wrote the halal sign, although this also turns to be uh, doubtful. Uh, then you take it. Or ask people who are having experience in this, uh, Jose, to tell you their experiences or uh, their expertise. What do they know about this? If a person take it, then he will be intoxicated or, or not. Because there are other substances where, where the criminals, when they couldn't find the, the khamr, they used those one as alternative. Although primarily they will not use it, but if they couldn't find that one, they use that one and they give them the same effect. So that's why Rasulullah said Al-Khamru Ma Khamar Al-Aqla Whatever covers the, the brain is called al kham Whatever covers the, the brain it, call, uh, it is called al kham So we don't need to uh, say Khamr has to be you know, the extract from the grape or uh, this or that you get it? The Prophet Sallallahu generalized. He says, whatever intoxicate, whatever covers the aql, this is what is called al khamr You get it? So, you should ask those people who, who know, or check whatever place you can trust, who can tell you exactly does this intoxicate or not. Otherwise, whenever you find something being uh, sold by the believers, and it is said that it is halal, and you don't see any sign of intoxication in it, then you use that's what I believe, you know, the, to be the, the situation of the vinegar we buy in the market nowadays. Wallahu a'la. You know. um, my brother, assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Is it haram to work in an environment that has ikhtilat even if he tries his best to exclude himself out of it? 
if the ikhtilat exists, as far as the ikhtilat is concerned, why do you go to that place and do the ikhtilat? Yeah, the honest speaking. Why, if you, if, if you ask yourself, ikhtilat, is it halal or haram? You will say haram. But if you're going to walk in a place that you have to do the ikhtilat, and how is it possible for you to, uh, to control your, yourself? You know, yeah, last Mahur Tila Grant is uh, good. Abdurrahman is asking on behalf of a brother. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, Sheikh. Should a person focus on seeking Salam knowledge Rahman. before giving da'wah? A person uh, focus on seeking knowledge before giving? Giving da'wah. He should combine uh, uh, both, Abdurrahman. He should combine both, da'wah and seeking and knowledge. He gives the da'wah, he gives the da'wah according to what he knows. He learns something, he can give da'wah within that limitation. The person shouldn't stay away from giving the da'wah because he studied. No, he does it according to his ability and time. Yeah, so I learn a little. I give da'wah within that limitation. If the person whom I am, you know, giving the da'wah to asks me questions in which I don't know, I call a scholar and ask, or I refer him to somebody to guide him. But I shouldn't stop giving da'wah because of uh, the study. No, da'wah is the job of every Muslim, every Muslim, with no exception. But everyone does it according to his ability and also the time. Yeah, somebody has full time, you know, in da'wah, you know, can give full time in da'wah, another person cannot give full time in da'wah. And if a person is smart, actually, he can make his life uh, uh, all about da'wah. Yeah, you work in a place, in a company. Yeah, in that place also be a da'i. Yeah, be a da'i with wisdom. Inshallah, people will be accepting the truth and you will see change in that company. You cannot say, no, no, this is just a job. You know, I cannot do anything. No, give da'wah. Let's see how somebody does something wrong. Uh, advise him in a nice way. This is da'wah. You know, you go and tell him the truth, advise him on what to do, spread the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your own place. Yeah, the wife at home with the with the kids is da'wah. Also. When she's teaching the kids, what is she doing? Da'wah. When the husband does something wrong, she fixes him. What is she doing? Da'wah. And alhamdulillah, now with the existence of this social media, also everyone can contribute in the da'wah in the right way if, if they want to. So, Abdurrahman, I believe combination of both is better for him. Keep studying and give da'wah on, on the way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us to feed. You know, Adam. That's all, Sheikh. Okay, alhamdulillah. So, bismillah uh, azza wa jal, I will stop here, inshallah. Was it? This is the second time I'm disappointing you, inshallah, in the next uh, class. Do remind me a day before the, the class, inshallah. Then I will talk. Yeah, uh, not tomorrow's class, the uh, Thursday's class, inshallah. Then I will give you a full explanation of what you are looking for. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you good and tawfiq and be with you wherever you are. In the Hubi Kulli Jameel and Kafeel. Subhanakallah, wa bihamdik, ashara la ilaha illa ant, astaghfirullah to be alayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.